Anytime my dad is around, anytime my dad is around, let me tell you, you will force yourself to wake up and go to church. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a any subscriber, welcome back. If you're new here, kindly don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, and to comment. So today is on a Monday. Just a minute. So today is on Monday. And honestly speaking, <laughs> I don't envy anyone that woke up today to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> I took my sweet time, I woke up at my own time and I feel fresh and I feel so ready for this video. So anyway guys, without wasting any, any time, today I want to walk down memory lane, yes. Today I want to talk about some of my childhood memories because I have a couple of them. Especially for someone like me, honestly speaking, I am, um, I have a lot of memories when I was a child, a lot of them and most of them are just exciting and that's what I want to share with you guys. So, um, I grew up in the village. Yeah, in the Kenyan village. And most of most of you, or most of the things that I've heard from people, or some of the stereotypes that I've heard is that living in the village can be boring. People, like, people miss out on a lot. But as a product of someone who grew up in the village, I totally disagree. Living in the village, I had so much fun. There was no pressure. There was no, you know, so many limitations, especially one thing I've noticed about uh, kids that are brought up in town is that um, there's a lot of limitations, especially when it comes to, you know, the time that you're supposed to be outside the house. You know, there are things like, you know, you cannot go to your neighbor or you, know, you cannot so many so many things that i've noticed in town but back in the village it was like a whole community it was just like a community play outside anytime you want visit your neighbors eat their food just we had a lot a lot a lot of fun and one thing that i remember one specific memory that i'll never forget and uh, yeah it's usually with me i just carry it with me everywhere is <clears throat> back in the village uh Back then, in the nineteen uh, in the nineteen nineties, <laughs> in the nineteen nineties, uh, we we had solar solar panels. We used to use uh, the solar system. We never had electricity in our home. Actually, our village got electricity. I think a few years ago. I think ten years ago. But before then, until I came to Nairobi, I think yeah, until I think got to high school, half of high school. That is when we got electricity but before then we used to use these solar panels i know you guys know what solar this how solar operates if you don't know kindly just when google google make google your friend basically during rainy seasons it was hell for us it was really hard to watch tv because without the sun we are nothing <laughs> back then we used to depend on the sun a lot a lot to watch tvs to warm our water we never had like showers hot showers so we used to take um what we take water cold water we pour in a in a, in a basin or a bucket then we go leave it outside when it's sunny and then we heat our water from there then we use it to shower <laughs> since there was no there was no shower <laughs> yeah and then for our tvs for our tv let no hey no one was allowed to watch tv during the day wait until you caught watching tv during the day you'd be massacred literally why are you watching tv during the day like we need the energy to use you know to use at night to watch the tv and i remember back then my family and i we used to be so into soaps you know kina some of our paradise kina the promise I don't know if you guys can remember those shows. We used to be so hooked. We used to be so hooked. But we didn't have electricity. We did not have electricity. 
So we cannot watch the TV during the day. So the only time we watch the TV was at night. If we don't, if, if, we, if, we, if we watch the TV during the day, we're not going to watch soaps. And we were religiously into soaps. Have you ever been committed to soaps to a point where you go crazy without watching it? And it was the entire family. It was the entire family. So during the day, no watching of the TV. So that at night we can at least have some, you know, some energy to, to use on the TV. Our thing is uh, going to church was mandatory. Now, leave alone this, you know, where you wake up, you feel like this Sunday you don't want to go to church. Uh, you know, nowadays that is how I am. Like you wake up some Sundays, you're like, oh my God, today I don't feel like going to church. Back then, as kids, going to church on Sunday was mandatory. Actually, especially when my dad is around. My dad is this strict African parent, extremely strict. Strict. You know, you know, if you have a strict parent, you know what I'm saying, you can relate. So when my dad used to come home, he used to come home every Sunday, as long as he is around. My friend, you have to wake up in the morning. The service used to start at 7.30 a.m. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you're tired. It does not matter if yesterday night what you were doing or what time you slept. On Sunday morning, my dad would wake up very early in the morning so that he can see who has not gone to church. And then if you've not gone to church, I'm telling you guys, you'd be beaten, you'd be flogged. <laughs> Why are you not going to church? Like guys, every time, each and every time, okay, at least my mom was a softie. My mom is a softie actually. She doesn't really talk much. So for her, we were like comfortable. Some of the Sundays we would miss church. But anytime my dad is around, anytime my dad is around, let me tell you, you will force yourself to wake up and go to church. You will have to wake up and go to church. <laughs> what are you saying? You have to go to church. And if you fail to doing so, I'm telling you, you'd be bit, you'd be flogged. You know how African parents don't joke when it comes to caning their kids. Oh my, it was just crazy. And another thing, uh, with um, well, another another memory I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mom she used to on our birthday. Because I have my elder brother, we're just the two of us, okay? On our birthdays, my mom used to make sure she has prepared a cake for every person. Like, she used to make sure she has made a cake for the birthday. And let me tell you guys, growing up, we never had gas. This cooking gas, I don't know what. We used to use, uh, uh, what are they called? The fire hood. Like uh, we used to go to the, you know, to the, to the farm or to the shamba, we get some firewood and then we come, we had those three stones, we, we light a fire, then we cook from there. And then we used to have these other means of cooking where we get the charcoal, you know how charcoal, you use charcoal to cook? Yeah, like uh, some sort of, you get the jiko, nachukwa jiko and some charcoal. So my mom used to to make her cake using the, the charcoal because we never had the oven. <laughs> We never had the, the the gas oven. We never had like we never had anything to make cake. We just used what we had, and that was the charcoal. So my mom would go if she knows tomorrow is my birthday or my brother's birthday or it's Christmas. Oh my God, that woman loves. She loves us. What the things she used to do for us. Like let me say, I grew up in the village, but I I was fortunate enough, and and for this I really thank God every single time I thank God for it. I yes I was brought up in the village, but I was privileged enough to get you know what I needed that time. I wouldn't say I lacked anything to be honest. Like anything I asked for was given to be to me by my parents. Even though sometimes, you know, it was, you know, we were not in that that position, that position where my parents would give me everything. But what I needed that time, I had the privilege of getting it. So my mom used to make sure that every single birthday, every single Christmas, she has made a cake. And it was not an easy process because she has to go buy charcoal, come back, light a fire, you guys, if you're Kenyan, you know how we normally use the jiko to light a fire, the charcoal one. So she'll come home with the charcoal, light a, light a fire, and somehow manage to make a cake 
using that jiko. And let me tell you, those cakes used to slap. They used to slap. Oh, guys, they used to slap. What? <laughs> they used to slap. And we would invite all kids. Everyone in the village would invite them. And it was just, a, oh, God. We, we had fun. Oh, God, I, I had fun. Growing up, I, I, I really had a lot of fun. I think I remember while growing up was, uh, like I said, I have an elder brother, right? And we used to really, uh, you know, growing up with a sibling, how you guys can really torture one another. <laughs> you can really torture one another. And <clears throat> usually, yeah, <clears throat> usually it comes from a good place. But there's just something, there's just some satisfaction that comes with, you know, uh, torturing your sibling a little bit. <laughs> mom used to come with snacks like every time she came home from work she used to come with snacks and most of the time it was some chocolates they were called um fudge i don't know if you grew up during that uh, period of ours i'm sure you know what fudge was fudge was uh, chocolate it was just a small chocolate uh but it was really sweet so my mom would either come home with uh, sausages or fudge the chocolate or if she doesn't have like enough money she would come with only fudge or only sausage but she had to come home with a snack like every time she got home and we just saw her from the door we would just go for for her handbag because we knew something was inside there either a fudge or a sausage so <clears throat> when she came with these snacks and then i take mine and then my brother takes his what we used to do is we used to time one another like there are days I would hide my snacks, then I wait for my brother to finish his, then I start eating mine so that he can come and so that he can feel that pain of just seeing me. Oh my god, kids, that pain of just seeing me eat my snacks. <laughs> eat my snacks. And what used to give me the satisfaction even more was the fact that he used, the fact that he has to come and beg me to give me the snack, to give him the snacks, my snacks. <laughs> and vice versa so there are days i would hide mine and then there are days he would, he would uh, hide his and then i would go to him and then i start crying and then i start begging him to give me some and then he would like you know give me just a little of that i really i really had a lot of fun when i was a child you can just imagine like your mom coming home and then you know you're with your brother there you've been waiting for her the whole day because you know at the end of the day we'll have some snack and then some snack come and then you hide the snacks from your brother just to torture him so that when he finishes his i mean he's also a child so when he finishes his he will come asking me and begging me to give to give him mine but as a child i'm very happy because i'm like oh so you finished yours here is mine, here is my sausage, here is my, here is my chocolate. And he would literally beg me and cry or I would do the same, beg him and cry. Until now I'd be like, okay, now I think I, can, I think I can give you a little bit. Maybe I can give you something small. And then I give him something small. <laughs> and then I give him something small or he gives me something small. But it was really fun. It was really, 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 really fun. And I remember now I think about my, my childhood. I used to cry a lot. My I've been a cry baby for a while now. <laughs> I'm still working on that because most of the time I up to date I think I my, my tears are normally here. Like I can just cry anytime. <laughs> I can just cry anytime. So I remember most of the time when my mom used to go somewhere, let's go, let's say to work or to the market or just uh, someplace far. I used to cry a lot. I used to cry a lot. Like, I wanted to join her so bad. I wanted to go with her every place she went to. So, every time I see her leave, I would cry. But then, she developed this lie. I don't know if she, I don't know if I'm the only child that a parent has ever used this on. But I remember my mom used to tell me, okay, we will go together. But first, just go inside, grab a sweater, and then we go. <laughs> child, children will always be children. I was just a child, man. Mom, at least. Why did you have to lie to me? <laughs> she used to lie to me a lot, using this line a lot. She used to use this line a lot. And it's the fact that I never got used to it. Like, I never I never got to, to know 
that you know my mom is lying every single time she would use that line on me and it always worked she'd be like you know what mom okay fine we will go together don't cry but what you what i want you to do is just go in your room get a, a sweater and then you'll meet me here i'll be waiting for you here we shall go together we'll go together we'll live together and then when i go and grab my sweater and come back my mom has already left mama why i think betrayal started it. i think betrayal started very early in my life <laughs> i started encountering betrayal at a very young age <laughs> i would cry i would really cry and my grandma would try and you know again lie to me as if it was a lies after lies oh my god now that i'm thinking about it as a child i was lied to a lot and i have to go back and ask for my for my what what do people ask for nothing right I have to ask for something. I don't know. I mean, they can't have lied to me that much and just get away with it. And I remember my grandma would be like, why are you crying? You know, you're not supposed to cry when your mom is traveling or when she's going somewhere because something might happen to her. Oh, my God. And who wants any, Who wants something to happen to their mom? No, I don't want anything bad to happen to my mom. So I had to keep quiet. Like, I had no choice. I had to keep quiet. That is to say. <laughs> Another thing is, uh, we just... Okay, I used to sleep a lot with my grandma. We used to sleep. I loved, I enjoyed sleeping with my grandma. Like, I love my grandma. Up to date, I just love my grandma. There are days we just sleep um, in one bed. My grandma, my brother, and myself. Because we don't really want to, you know, sleep with any other person. We just want to sleep with her. And one thing about my childhood memory that um, I, I I know has really... has impacted me right now. And not in a good way. I don't think it's in a good way is... Nowadays, I'm not a fan of bananas. I don't like bananas. And that is from my childhood memory. Like, my grandma used to feed us a lot of bananas. Bananas, bananas that are roasted, bananas that are boiled, bananas that have been fried, bananas that have been... Like, we used to eat a lot of bananas and drink a lot of tea. Like, my grandma was... My grandma was, if you're not eating bananas, you're drinking tea. Tea in the morning, tea before 10, 10, uh, tea before lunch, tea tea at lunchtime, tea before four, tea, it was tea bananas, tea bananas, tea bananas. And honestly speaking, right now, I hate bananas. I hate bananas. Anytime I go somewhere and I have an option of not eating bananas, if I have another option, I'll go for the other option. If I have an option which is not tea, then I'll go for the other option. Because growing up, guys, my grandma fed us these things. Oh, my God. But I love her to death. I just love her so much. Because she used to make sure every single time we are eating, there's something we are eating. There's something. Just something we are eating. If it's fruit, if it's tea, we are eating. And it used to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Anyway, one last one. Okay, I have a long list. I have a long list. So I think I'll do a part two sometime. I think I'll do a part two in another video. Yeah, because I have a whole list. I have a very long list. But I don't really want this video to be that long. Anyway, one other memory that I remember was we there's this seat in the house that was reserved only for my dad. Only for my dad. Only. Like, no one else was supposed to sit on that seat. And you know, for my, my dad never um, was never around that much because of his work. He used to, to move around a lot. So we, 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 we actually saw him maybe a few, just a few, a few times in a year. But it doesn't matter how many times we see our dad. Even if it's once a year or twice a year, we used to know that that seat is his and no one else is supposed to sit on that couch. And it used, it, it was very, it was very worth can I say unique? It was very unique. It was the only seat that it, it, it looked different from other seats. It was like a holy place. No one was supposed to sit there. Okay, even, even now, there's a seat at, at home where we know this is where he sits. But at least right now, you can go sit there. Anyone can just go and sit there. But back then, that was my dad's seat. Like, why are you sitting on your father's seat? That's your father's seat. Why are you supposed to? Why are you sitting there? I'm telling you, African parents, African homes, African homes. Hey, what? What? Yeah. Yeah, so there's that. And then one last one. Do I have another one, really? I have a couple, but I think that's the highlight. 
yeah one more one more one more childhood memory uh is um plates we had plates for for visitors and uh, cups for visitors and you were not supposed to use it in fact if my mom catches you using a plate that is supposed to be for guests oh god and most of them they were glass actually they all of them were glass plates and glass cups for visitors for guests only wait until my mom gets me using a plate and me pattern at me as an awageni or cups that are supposed to be for guests i'm telling you that day you're going to be bit why are you using plates for guests why why are you doing so <laughs> but all i can say is um childhood a childhood uh, my childhood was really fun it was really fun i have a lot of memories that i remember and i just i'm just happy and it just gives me a lot of you know high vibration and yeah i don't really if i had a choice to like um maybe swap or you know change anything about my childhood i don't think i'll change anything because everything i got back then i still use some of the things i learned back then now in my life in this life that i am in right now that has a lot of pressure oh god but yeah uh, guys, if you have uh, some of your childhood memories that you remember and uh, maybe share with us how maybe they impacted you, did they impact you in a good way, did they impact you in a bad way, and what are some of those memories? Guys, my comment section is always open for everyone. Kindly engage with me. Share with me some of these memories and yeah, let's, let's engage. Let's talk. <laughs> anyway, guys, I guess I'll see you in my next video and bye.